What up, what up, it's Dane here. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you the science of gaining muscle mass for hard gainers and for skinny guys, or just anyone looking to build muscle mass, right? You won't find us anywhere else, and we're using science on a daily to get people jacked here. So without further ado, man, let's cut straight for the shit. Let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, I'm giving out a free workout plan at the end of the video. So first of all, for the warm-up, I always start with a general warm-up. And for warm-up, most people complicate it. Only three things need to happen. Number one, an elevation of baseline oxygen consumption, right? So just basically elevating your heart rate as well. And number three is just getting your core temperature up as well. This can be done to like a five to 10 minute walk. And that basically hits almost all of them, right? So that's basically what I do for my warm-up. Now, when it gets into the weight training side of things, I do a more specific warm-up, obviously with weights and then Thirdly, I do some potentiation, right? Or potentiation, if I could say it. That basically means like, let's say I'm doing pull-ups here. I do pull-ups with just my body weight. And then I'll do pull-ups with maybe like half of the weight I'm gonna do it with. And then I work to my working set, right? So as you can see, I done a pull-up with a 20 kg. Now I'm doing pull-up with 40 kgs, right? So that's basically all that needs to be done for a warm-up. Now, what's really important, and this is like the key information you need to know if you're a hard gainer, right? So, number one, really pay attention to my exercise selection. This is absolutely crucial. This is like the number one fact that is gonna help you build more muscle mass and a number one mistake most hard gainers make. First of all, they start off with isolation exercises instead of the compound exercises. Now, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a workout routine that typically skinny guys do compared to the workout routine I'm showing you now, which you should be doing. So number one, like I said, the compound exercises. These are pull-ups, dips, bench press, squats, deadlift rows, all the hard exercises that work multiple muscle groups. Now, you can also actually class a dumbbell curl as a compound exercise because it does actually cross multiple joints, but let's just keep it simple, right? So let's just call the compound exercises, which I call them. So that's that. Now. Mind muscle connection, let's face it, most hard gainers, newbies, skinny guys are probably looking at Kai Green, Phil Heath, or any other Mycelium peer and thinking, shit man, I can't feel my back when I'm doing these chin ups, I can't feel my quads when I'm doing these squats. When really, who the hell needs to feel their back when you're doing full reps of heavy chin ups, right? That's completely bullshit. So, fair enough if you're doing high rep uh, squats or anything like that and you're really trying to establish the mind muscle connection. But for, that's just really not necessarily necessary on the compound exercises focus on just lifting more weight over a period of time. So here's why I recommend compound exercises, right? Here's where the science comes in. Number one, it causes more homeostatic disruption. Homeostasis is basically your body trying to maintain everything it has, right? So it's just basically a shit old balance which you don't really want. So that gets disrupted. Number two, it's more mechanical tension. Now, mechanical tension is one of the three primary factors to muscle growth. And in fact, I'd say mechanical tension is the number one, most important one, if you're thinking black and white. And mechanical tension is basically the muscular force, right? So when you're doing a heavy bench press and you're feeling like the muscles coming off the bone or some shit like that, or you know what I'm saying, that is muscular force. So muscular force equals mechanical tension. You need that. Now, one thing I have to mention is that I don't recommend you do less than three repetitions on the compound exercises unless you go with strength, which it's not because that's why you clicked on this video is to build more muscle mass. So don't do less than three reps because of this. Number one is going to bring more synergist muscles in, meaning it's not going to be the prime movers. Now, in simple terms, this basically means that if I'm doing, uh, let's say, a chin up, I really want to try and work my back, even though a lot of biceps is obviously going to be involved as well but if we go really really heavy other muscles surrounding those muscles are really going to come into play so that's that now another very 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 common thing that i see hard gaining skinny guys copying mr olympias and stuff like that is range of motion right so a lot of people say full range of motion partial i see kai green do partial all this bullshit now here's the science of full range of motion number one it will recruit all motor units, right? So for example, let's say I do a chin up. At the bottom, there's not much motor unit recruitment. Then at the middle, there's a little bit more. And at the top, right at the top, it'll be a full unit motor 
full multi unit recruitment. Whereas if I did just half the rep, like partials, that's not that's not going to recruit all of them at all. In fact, it's going to make me stronger at that one position, which you don't want. You want to be stronger at that full range of motion. So that's that. Number two, we know that muscle growth is much better when it's stretched under load. So stretching under load leads to a more hypertrophy stimulus. Keep that in mind. Number three, more volume. Now this one might catch people off and let me, ex I'll explain here. The reason being it's more volume is because think how much further you're traveling, right? So again, on a chin up, if I'm at the bottom and I'm only pulling myself halfway up, that's not gonna be as much volume as if I pull myself up from the bottom to the top. So that's more volume that's why you should be doing full range of motion and not partial repetitions now one thing i have to mention here i don't want to sound like a broken record here but partial repetitions may have it time may have its time and place right but most likely for a hard gainer for a skinny guy it certainly doesn't right so that's that now this is a back and bicep workout here a pull workout so i might as well talk more about that one thing in my programming and one thing that uh, the programs I make for other people is that make sure to hit your back with a vertical and a horizontal movement. If you don't know what they are, a vertical movement would be a chin up, a lat pull down, an horizontal movement would be a barbell row or a seated cable row, right? So I'd recommend a compound exercise for each one of them. Obviously, like I'm really, really, really harping on about compound exercises for each major, major muscle group for the back and for the larger muscle groups will be more than one as well so that's that now let's move on to the next step because i don't want to sound way too much like a broken record i want to get this moving fast okay just before we move on to the next exercise i'm going to quickly be talking about training to failure right i'm going to refer to this as rir reps and reserve now as you can see me here i'm in my third week of my training block out of four weeks so I'm almost hitting the last weekend. I'm training to failure a bit more often, but here's the deal. You do not need to train to failure. Let me explain. For example, I did five reps in my first set. On my second set, if I tried to do five reps again, my third set, I probably would have got three reps. And then imagine my fourth and first set, probably two reps each in that set. Now, as you can see, my total volume load and my total work has been impacted. Now we know that volume load is one of the primary factors when it comes to building more muscle mass which i'll talk about later so training to failure it's really not necessarily i only really train to failure at the last set of this exercise as well so here you could see me i'm not just speaking man i'm doing it as well so you see me on my phone all the time now this is not snapchat instagram or anything like that this is tracking my workouts right and that's why skinny guys hard gainers cannot gain any muscle mass because they don't track their workouts consistently. So what, what, everyone wants to know how, how many minutes to rest, how many seconds, and here's the deal. You do not need to rest 60 to 19 seconds and do 8 to 12 reps like most bros or someone will tell you. Here's the science behind it. There's been a study by Brad Schoenfeld that I'll put on the screen now that showed resting 3 minutes was more superior for muscular hypertrophy, so muscle growth and strength compared to 1 minute. Even though they were both doing three sets and eight to 12 reps. So those are all the same. Now, why is this the case? Because they had a higher volume load. Resting three minutes obviously gave them more recovery than resting one minute. Therefore, they can do more reps. Again, equals higher volume load. So I guess I can't just talk about rest times without talking about sets, right? So here's the signs. There's been a meta analysis and I'll put it on the screen now that showed 40% greater gains muscular hypertrophy when doing multiple sets compared to one set. So they done two to three sets and 46 sets, and they were both way more superior to doing one set per exercise. Now, I don't know many people that do one set per exercise if they're really serious about building muscle mass. So maybe you're probably thinking, okay, this is quite common sense. And let's talk about reps because we can't talk about sets without talking about reps. Now, this is where it's gonna get a bit sciencey and I'm gonna try my best to simplify this for you guys. So this is basically how to gain more muscle mass, the pillar that needs to be in place. Now, like I said before, the total volume load is a primary factor for muscle growth. To work out the volume load, do your reps times the weight you've lifted. For example, if I did 10 reps and I did 100 kg on a bench press, this would be 10 times 100, which I think equals 1000. 
Now in order to get the total work done, you take that number that you've just got and you multiply that by the number of sets. For example, I've done 10 reps, I lifted 100 kg and I did three sets. So that would be 10 times 100 times three equaling 3000. So now that you know how to actually calculate your volume load, now you can actually increase this yourself. Now, moving on to step number two, and probably again, one of the biggest reasons why hard gainers can't gain any more muscle mass is because you're not utilizing, or should I say, applying progressive overload. This is not just lifting more weight over a period of time. This can also be increasing the reps. More volume equals more growth. However, it is a dose response relationship, meaning there's a point where it's gonna hinder you more than it's gonna benefit you. And in most cases, for most hard gainers or skinny guys, or should I say newbies, even though genetics do play a part in this and individual differences, probably about 18 to 20 sets per muscle group per week is where it's not gonna benefit you anymore really. But again, like I said, there are differences. One of the best pieces of advice I can give a skinny guy or hard gainer is to really stop complicating shit. Just concentrate on the compound exercises because we know they produce more force on larger muscle groups and more muscle groups as well. If you really wanna grow, man, just increase your volume load that you're doing, scale it up from let's say week one to week four, then hit a deload and also make sure you're lifting more weight over a period of time and your rep ranges are increasing as well. Therefore, you apply more progressive tension overload. Combine that with some food which I'll give you a video at the end of this video to show you how to eat more food as well. Okay, so talking more about actual exercise, here you can see me do a T-bar row now. If you want your back to get bigger or anything like that, as always, have two compound movements for vertical and horizontal, like I just said. However, look, I'm using 10 kg plates on it. This is not me having a big ego or anything like that. This is me wanting more full range of motion, so more range of motion, because like I said before, that will lead to more muscle growth. So here you can see me go all the way down, stretch, bring it all the way back up to my chest, not ego lifting, just trying to hit eight reps, reps, eight reps with maybe one or two from failure. I mean, I could actually barbell row or T-bar row, 100 kg plus with really shit form, no full range of motion, throw my head forward like a turkey or some shit like that, you know, but just trying to get a full range of motion, doing it properly now. I'm really trying to drive my elbows back as much as possible. Not that I'm trying to establish a mind muscle connection, but I am at least trying to do the best for my can and trying to activate the muscle groups that I really want to activate. So now doing some isolation exercise after I've done the compound exercises, not this pre-exhausting that some people use. And if you're a skinny guy and a high again and you're pre-exhausting the muscle, um, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing, but you really don't need to do that. That's like an advanced training technique. I'm sure it has its time and place, but when your muscles are really, really small, it definitely hasn't got its time and place, right? So concentrate on our compound exercises, but let me give you some more light on isolation exercises. Now, the reason being why I do the isolation exercises after is because after I've had some mechanical tension, remember the muscular force, now I'm really trying to chase the pump, right? Because I like the feeling of the pump, plus, we know that metabolic stress, or if you've been watching my videos before, is also quite a good stimulus for hypertrophy as well. Not that it actually st stimulates muscle growth itself. However, I think personally it stimulates muscle growth through mechanical tension because when you're chasing the pump and you actually get close to muscular failure, that's where it's actually gonna increase muscle activation and motor unit recruitment as well. So when it comes to isolation exercises, man, this is where I get a bit blurry. This is where I try to get my mind-muscle connection established. Um, I even close my eyes sometimes when I'm training specific muscle groups just to really focus on a contraction. So it's not all bullshit, this mind-muscle connection thing. Um, there has been some studies that have actually led to increase in muscle activation by Brad for I believe, but hasn't been released yet. So I guess I could be talking bullshit. You don't need to believe me, but you can feel for yourself anywhere when you really close your eyes. So moving on to the biceps, again, I'm starting off an exercise that I can really load my biceps up. You can lift a lot more weight with, let's say, a straight bar, bar bar curl, or easy bar curl, um, than you can with, let's say, a unilateral bicep curl, or some fancy old bicep exercise with one arm, or some shit like that, right? You can really start overloading your biceps. So that's exactly why I've chosen this exercise, even in my own routine, because I still stick to the basics as well. 
When I do these kills, I really try to keep my wrist almost locked. Like I'm not rolling my wrist at the top of the movement, as you can see, because that just defeats the whole object, in my opinion. And I'm really trying to focus on strict form because this is not a lower back exercise like you see most people do it. And I'm not training exactly to failure because I want to train my biceps, right? I don't want to train, train my glutes and knee back and shit like that. Even though that may have, have its time and place somewhere. But for most hard gainers and skinny guys, probably not. So again, really try, if you look at my elbows, it's really just trying to move up and down. And really trying to minimize the shoulder movement as much as I really can. Basically try to place more tension on my biceps. But again, saying that, I've seen a lot of other people move their shoulders and actually bring the bar to their eyes in order to get more range of motion. So maybe you could try that out as well. There's not one size fits all. Just try and keep more tension on the muscle. I guess that's what the bros would say, right? <laughs> and lastly, I moved on to my last, last exercise, which was the dumbbell curl right now. As you can see, I'm lifting 7.5 kgs here. I'm not trying to lift my ego. I'm really trying to make my biceps work right and this as you can see i kind of prioritized the compound or should i say it's not really a compound exercise too much i guess i'm not sure what you want to classify it as but i used the exercises or exercise should i say that i could lift more weight first so i did an easy bar curl i did like 25 kg then i moved to an exercise where i could lift less weight but now i could again concentrate more on a my muscle connection like promised at the start of the video, here's basically a skinny or hard gainer's typical routine that I see most skinny guys walk into the gym, right? So it looks something like this. The first exercise will not be a compound exercise at all. It'll be like a lap pull down or some shit like that. They wouldn't even jump on a pull up bar or even attempt to, should I say. Then the next one would be a unilateral. So unilateral basically, basically means like one arm, that shit. They basically do some weird exercise like that and I had to make some shit exercises up here. I didn't even know. I didn't actually attempt to do them correctly because I kind of tried to imitate what some people would do. And then the next exercise was again a one arm row, which again is unilateral. You cannot use a lot of weight. You cannot produce as much force. So again, this is completely stupid. And then the last one, oh, I don't know what order I'm going to put this in, is a barbell uh, again, a unilateral, uh, but not barbell, you know, bicep exercise. Again, you cannot produce as or lift as much weight and produce as much force. So what sense does that make? I'm really, really not sure. So again, this was, or not again, this was my hard gain a skinny guy workout routine backed by science, using science to get people jacked on a daily. In my opinion, and if I have to say this myself, it was pretty high quality video when it comes to content and information so this could actually be applied to anyone i guess trying to look or looking to build more muscle mass and that's it man if you enjoyed the video let me know down below share it with people and subscribe to the channel and if you want to know how to eat more because we know there's no point of following a great training program if you can't even eat more click the video here watch these videos and they will help you gain more muscle mass as well so that's that man don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let me know your thoughts i think i've said everything oh yeah one more thing i always forget this to last do not go off the video now down in my free workout plan at the description down below or link down below whatever word you want to use dane come on <laughs> and as always man stay positive stay smiling unfortunately you can't see my face here but i'll see you in the next one